Welcome to Good Night Book with Erica and Nate. Now it sounds better. Oh, way better. Yep. Way okay. better. Is it loud enough? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's soothing. Way better. Huh. This is the Nate Man coming at you live from <laughs> sunny Madison, Wisconsin, and you're listening to the sound, my voice. <laughs> Today we've got a fat stack of Dave Brubeck. Take five. Here we go. We're gonna have. We're just gonna play the same song five times. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I gotta. I gotta go take a. I gotta go take a lap. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Dave um, Brubeck, is that the right name? That's that totally name? right. That's a and great five. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what Nate Mann would have played uh-huh. in the seventies. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, when you sent me this book mm-hmm. via text, you were doing all lowercase quick texts to me, and I was uh, like, "Oh, he misspelled it." So I googled blueberries for sale. Oh my god! Because I was like, "This must be another in the series of caps for sale." Right. <laughs> once cat the cat market dried up once people didn't have heads anymore it's like well they're still eating putting blueberries in their throat um <laughs> sorry what's so graphic or tough there but um You're bypassing the mouth lips and tongue so this this is that is my major complaint actually with the book is that mm. um i didn't grow up with this book and anytime I see it, my brain wants it to be blueberries for sale. Mm. And you know how my, how I feel about capitalism, Erica. So that turns me off right away. Yeah. Like, what gives you the right? These, how are these your blueberries and That's all right. this? And then I'm like, but then I realize it's sale. And, and, and it's better. fine. It's fine. Oh, and incidentally, I guess we should just get into it. The you book we're introduce- talking about. Yeah. Let me introduce. You've seen it at clubs and colleges all over this country. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is, we're talking today about uh, Blueberries for Sale, Blueberries for Sale <laughs> by Robert McCloskey. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it is not a book I grew up with. Uh, Viv grew up with it. Um, this is Viv's brother. <laughs> this book is Viv's older brother, Blueberries <laughs> for Sale. They grew up together, uh, so they're very close. No, but actually, and then I, I think th- this is her original copy, and I think that's why we haven't read it more to Wes, is because Wes, you know, tears things mm-hmm. ac- accidentally. She's just mm-hmm. got off incredible grip strength. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, just like it's an like, eagle talon, right? It's a, yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. It's like she has not learned, you know, along with that greater power comes a greater responsibility, and she has not yet learned to harness it. We're kind of in a prequel right now. <laughs> this is where we would be is the prequel. origin story we're still in the origin story yeah and it's just mostly just daring books <laughs> uh it's just like a huge Bone montage oh, own books yeah because uh-huh. you got a lot of those laying around oh done so blueberries for sale uh we'll can i do s- synopses? synopses sure let's do it okay i'm gonna do mine first i typically go first you typically do let today is no different than any other day it is not so this is a story about a little girl and her mom picking berries, blueberries to be specific. No, this is a story. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. You could do it. I can't. They meet up. So after the, they're picking blueberries, right? So they meet up with a little bear and his mother also eating blueberries. This is a story that have gone terribly wrong, but it did not. <laughs> it could have gone terribly wrong. Okay. My synopsis is as follows. Here we go. Mine is actually longer, I think, maybe. We'll Hmm. have to do a word count later. We'll edit in the real word count. A thousand. (laughs) A a kid and a cub both eat a bunch of blueberries and switch places. Like they get confused, not like Freaky Friday style. But they figure it out. And spoiler alert, no one gets mauled. We both obviously saw the bear threat in there. Yeah, tracking that bear very closely. Yeah. What kind of bears do you think these are? Black bears? Um, no, I think they're grizzly. Mm, wait, you know what? I don't know if it ever is explained in the book, but I just looked it up, and it supposedly takes place in Maine. Mm. Is there ever a map or anything? Um, so they're Maine bears. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Whatever they have, I, maybe not grizzlies. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see if it says. I'm trying to see. 
I have got and I'm just paging through here. These are still people. Now that's a bear, little bear. Just mm. a little bear. Yeah. Oh well. So okay. It's a bear uh, anyway. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. Maybe really it know. doesn't. I think you're uh, you're supposed to uh do one thing. So this is kind of one of my what's mm. wrong highlights, highlights magazine situation. Uh or it's a highlight too. It's like that they take a moment to address bear safety or safety in general and why bears would be afraid of humans and humans afraid of bears. You know, they say briefly the, you know, when they discover at mm -hmm. the end, when they they're discover swapping. each other, they're like, the bears like sees the kittens like, whoa, uh, and backs away slowly, kind of mm -hmm. shy of humans. And I feel like they could have gone further though when it was the mom's turn and but done like some, you know, like a PSA of what you're supposed to do. Cause <laughs> I can't remember. I think you're supposed to go, you know, according to the show alone, you're supposed to go, Hey bear, Hey bear, Hey bear. And make yourself kind of big and loud. And then yep. um, keep eye, do you keep eye contact and back away? I don't know about the backing away. I don't know anything about it. If I ever saw a bear, I'd be fucked. I know. <laughs> well, clearly you can just go about your business picking blueberries because that's what Sal's mom does. She just oh, maybe, like she I doesn't even know. flail. She doesn't throw a pail. She does look worried though. I will she? say that because I was I, I thought she looked off awfully casual, and then I kind of went back and looked at the picture, and she does look uh, distressed. Okay. So that's good at least because I did think she was a pretty bad mom for a second. Yep. Um, my big highlight of this book for real is the kid i think sal is a great character especially for 1948 making a girl such a little shit yeah like <laughs> is, is awesome yeah uh and i say that i'm allowed to say that i'm a, a proud father of a little shit so <laughs> so i'm allowed to say that yeah um i didn't i didn't peg her for a little shit i thought she was pretty adorable uh Ooh. wandering off not mutually uh, exclusive. Okay. More like she keeps eating the blueberries. She's not supposed to. She keeps grabbing more out of her mom's pail. But the way, a, yes, a little that scamp. is true. She's also like <laughs> not wearing a little dress and all that, I guess. Yeah. Like she's like a, a tough. The only reason you know she's a she is because mom calls her a her or somebody says her. Mm -hmm. Right. And her name somebody. is Sal, which is. Could be. Yep. Could be Salvador. <laughs> Salentino. Salentino, uh huh. Uh, Salvo. Salubrious. Salubrios. Yeah, that's, that's the nail. You know that because the other one's actually gender <laughs> neutral. Salubrious could be either. Yeah. Salubriasa is not not that one. Um. So, yeah. So it could have done more bear safety. Could have been like she could have like yeah said hey bear hey bear where's my daughter mm -hmm. <laughs> hey Sal. <laughs> <laughs> the bear would have said, "Hey, Sal. Hey, kid. Hey, hey Sal. Human. Hey, mm -hmm. human. Hey, human." But did Sal keep following the bear after the bear backed away? I'm fuzzy on the details. No, she was following the bear. She did. She did go follow the bear, and I did feel like that was a problem. Like, not great instincts, there, kid. Although at the end, by the end, she's just sitting by a rock, kaplunking. Mm -hmm. Right, and and apparently. This was read to me as per usual on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the person just kept saying kaplunk, kaplunk, kaplunk. But there are mm. actually three. Yeah, that's terrible. Let's that's, that's, uh, that, let's report that YouTube <laughs> user. I will. I'll, I'll say that it was inappropriate content and I will uh -huh. report it. Do it because that is inappropriate. Yeah, it's, it, I think it says, what does it say? Curb. Kaplink, kaplank, kaplunk. Yeah, that's what I, I see. And I, I like that it's like, you know, as the blueberries go in, it sounds a little different. I like the sound effects. I do too. To say. A lot of books, I feel like it's sound effects wrong. Um, you know, when they write them out, they're like, not right at all. Like, yeah. Remember the caps for sale was the T, T, T. Yeah. T, 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 T. Just like but monkeys. I, just... Too close. It's just too similar you to remember monkeys. That, you know that old that song that uh, no more monkeys. Monkeys seeing on the bed. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that classic. 
Classic. I think it's an era, though. I, I had this feeling of nostalgia with this book because of the way it was drawn and then mm-hmm. that sound effect aspect of it. Because I think there's a few more in there. The most maybe like repetitive one is the kaplink, kaplink, kaplink. But um, it's sweet and it like makes you more engaged with the book. And Beatrix mm-hmm. Potter is like that. Mm-hmm. Caps for Sale, like we just said, has that. Um, I don't think Goodnight Moon. But the Red Barn from Margaret Weiss Brown had some animal noises, I think. Mm-hmm. We've talked about animal noises a couple times on this podcast, but this is like a whole nother level of like atmospheric. Uh-huh. Like Foley, like uh, written Foley. <laughs> yeah. It's Pretty asking good. a lot, I, I think. It's, it, you know, next it's going to be asking us for like thunder and lightning. Uh-huh. Or like maybe like 4D stuff where it's like, now you got to spray water on your kid. <laughs> For this part, because it's a whale squirting or whatever. Is that what you say? A whale squirting? Yeah, that's exactly. I know okay, exactly. I'm what you're a talking about. biologist, a zoologist. <laughs> uh, I live in a zoo, actually. Do you? Yeah, I smell like a monkey and I look like one too. Aww. For the listener at home, you can't tell this, but I do smell like a monkey and I look like one too. And I throw my poop and eat bananas. Now, next thing I wanted to say is, I had a question. What's your favorite berry? Okay, let me take you back Okay, to a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I used to really hate blueberries because mostly they were in muffins and those were really gross, like they're sweet. But now I really like blueberries. However, you I'm going to say kiwi. Kiwi's a fruit? <laughs> Kiwi is a fruit, but it's not a no, berry. No, I mean a berry. <laughs> Kiwi is a fruit? What? No. Okay. Um. What's my favorite berry? I still I can't. Why is, is it so hard? Fruit? Kiwi is stone fruit. I don't called? know. WTF a uh, kiwi is. I, I, I could honestly see a kiwi being a berry, to be honest. <laughs> I could see that being one of those facts. It's like, you know, did you act? No, a kiwi is actually a berry. <laughs> and tomatoes are fruit. Uh-huh. I thought you were going to say tomatoes are birds. <laughs> <laughs> and tomatoes are birds. Did you know that? Here's a fun fact. Did you know that tomatoes are actually birds? Do you think know kiwi is a fruit? Or is, <laughs> kiwi is a fruit and tomatoes what? are birds? These are the fun facts for today. Kiwis are fruit and... Tomatoes or birds. What's your favorite berry? Did you say? Did you answer the? Are you trying to avoid the question? <laughs> I do like blackberries. I like handpicked mm-hmm. blackberries on a shrub that kind of hurts a little bit because there's thorns. Sure. So not those big ass blackberries that you get in the store, but those little uh, black. I mean, caps. I'll eat them. Black, yeah, black caps, caps is what we used to call them. Yeah. We used to have what? those in our uh, oh. yard at the Eighth Street place. Did you know? Did you we plant? Do you remember? planting them no no they were just like back by the road mm. they were just like <laughs> like back in the shrub in the shrubs where you could never walk because it was too thick and then we're like i was i guess my mom must not have liked them because nobody ever knew about them until i was like 15 they was like there's a bunch of fucking berries back here <laughs> and then uh, from then on it was like my little secret hobby of going outside and eating uh, all the Aww. the road the, the road yeah. berries. My favorite berry is probably strawberry. That's I mean, a good it's, one. It's classic. and uh, If you can pick them and you things. get the local thing, the local picking situation for strawberries is far sure. superior to store stores. Yeah, for sure. It's reliable. Strawberries around here have been non-existent. They've been all like, every time they're at the store, they're on sale and they're probably like half juice. <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah. yeah. It's like, geez, I wonder, you know, you know, we can see in the container, right? <laughs> I see why these are on sale. You know, it's like oozing out. And you're like, yeah, these look fine. <laughs> well, hey, they're half. This is half price mold. <laughs> it's like halfway to a smoothie. Awesome. Can I play double this? <laughs> so great. Yeah, perfect. This is a real time saver. That's how they should sell them. Smoothie strawberries. They're practically <laughs> already smoothies. And they might get you drunk if you wait another couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> or die. You might uh, die. There's some. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of ways this could go. Just like, you know, blueberries for sale. Uh-huh. I keep saying sale and I'm not going to stop. I can't stop. Did you ever lose your kid? 
because I like I, this made me imagine the situation from both ends. I remember being lost as a kid, and I definitely have lost my kid, and it is not great. That's terrifying. Yeah, I have. I don't remember exactly where. I mean, usually it's around the neighborhood, and we just like continue to text the neighbors until somebody's like, "Oh yeah, they're here." Okay, that's kind of the age she's at now, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like more. I just need to know where you are. And then one time during early COVID, we were kind of like in that phase of testing out free range parenting and letting them wander around and and no parent had an answer and so we went kind of running around the neighborhood and it turns off it turns out the girls had just like decided to run down to the busy street and then like make a quick detour and not run into the street which is great but um (laughs) we all we all are scarred from that because i ended up using my like scary mom voice (laughs) <laughs> in a way that nobody in the neighborhood had ever heard before. And I think that's how people see me a little bit. I remember when your mom yelled at me. <laughs> that's nice. That's mm-hmm. good. And it's nice that you had that opportunity to get that reputation. I feel like that gives you street cred. Don't you know? fuck with me. Yep. Yeah. We don't. And then it's also like we're going to exclude Olive from this bad plan because we don't want to get in trouble. So it keeps Olive. <laughs> out of the mix too yeah we don't want to make your mom mad yeah <laughs> yeah um what about i was you? thinking an alternate version oh i lost west pretty recently in um mm-hmm. a grocery store which at least like there's walls yeah she's somewhere there um but then uh i was just like ooh, ugh, going all over to find her and she had was totally like wandering off and i knew she was wandering off and I was like, my intention was to be cool about it. But then it ended up, it was super not cool. She just wandered off and uh, I found her sobbing and talking to to this couple trying to say something, but they couldn't understand what she was saying. Uh. They were like, they're like guessing really badly. And I'm like, no, she's saying she lost her dad. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was thinking of a, like an alternate version of this book could have been that she, the mom just takes the kid in and takes yeah. the bear in, dresses her up like Sal, puts overalls on her or him, I guess the boy, the bear was a boy and then just passes her off as it passes the bear off as her daughter and like for the rest of their lives. And then the bear would take Sal in the mama bear. Uh, the bear is probably going to eat Sal. God. Sorry. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's just. Well, a way to make more of these books would have been to leave it as a cliffhanger. So, like, let's say mm-hmm. the baby bear wanders off with human mom and Sal wanders off with mama bear. And you see the part you just described where baby bear is being integrated, but you get a cliffhanger like Sal's wandering into a cave and you don't see the outcome. And mm-hmm. then, like, the following books would be like, what happened to Sal? You'd mm-hmm. want to know you'd buy them all. Blood berries for sale. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just strawberries for sale, maybe. And then they would change berries to bear. Oh, ease. I like that. Black <laughs> black bear ease for sale. Might be it. Main berries for main mm-hmm. bear ease for sale. Sal, so, oh, damn it. Uh, did you ever wear overalls? For sure. I grew up in the 90s. I mean, think about like all the people that we went to high school with that actually probably could have benefited from overalls for their work, like their chores in the morning. We went uh-huh. to school with a lot of farmers. And so like the irony is not lost on me that like none of them, I don't think, wore that kind of stuff to school. They were like trying to shed it and get into like different outfits. And then to have like all the hippies wearing overalls in the that school. That's pretty funny. They would have been like, oh, fuck these guys. Uh-huh. Maybe we should have like set up some sort of like trade where uh, when we get to school we just switch, <laughs> put their overalls on, uh-huh. and they can wear our whatever silk know. shirt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had one of those. I think you had like a color blocked silk shirt for dress up times. Um, mine, yes, I had mostly solid color silk shirts, but okay. I had. Uh, I know there is a shirt that you might be talking about that was not silk, but could have been like. It was actually cotton, but it almost it it had paisley. It had a paisley portion to it, and so it should have been. 
It was a button down and everything. It just was cotton. So it should have, but it could have been silk. It could have been silk, silk but it's cotton. It's over. Right. I didn't go all the way. Good job. Yeah, Good job. You, I did. I went all the way. Um, did you ever lose? Do you remember ever losing your mom or dad? Like at a no. department store or whatever? No, I do not. I'll 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 edit one in. I'll come up with one. We'll edit an <laughs> okay. AI generated one. <laughs> I'll just type in your perfect. Social security so that's number what it's for. Your parents' social security <laughs> numbers and lost, and then see what. Happens. And that's all you need. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'll give it so. to you right now. I'll give them all <laughs> to you right now. Okay, and go. I'm ready to write these down. Did you like this book? I know you had a, had a very recent and. Yeah, no, let's just be honest. I crammed it. With it. She crammed yeah. it. You crammed it and it had it read to you. By it somebody to me. who doesn't know how to read sound effects. <laughs> I do. I did like this book. I would totally read it to young children anytime. And I would be curious about young children's responses to this. I'd be curious to Olive's response to this because I think she has enough sense that she would be like, what's up with this bear? I thought they were going to get killed. She's been into like murder mysteries lately, so she mm. sees death everywhere. Nice. Well, yeah, do nice you... get used to it, you know. <laughs> get used to death. Yeah, it's seeing death us. everywhere. Yeah, it's coming, you it's know. Among us. Did you like this book? Do you like I, this book? I do like this book. Yeah, I think it's nice and simple. Mm -hmm. It tells a nice story. I like that that I don't know. I like that the girl character isn't typical. Um, I like the mom. I actually like the mom's parenting style. She's pretty chill, holds boundaries, but like isn't a dick about it. <laughs> you know, like she's like, now come on, just you do, you know, you yeah. don't, you know, I'm trying to do this. I'm just like, like, you know, teaching her the lesson, but understanding, of course, that she's gonna yeah. be a bunch of blueberries. And yeah. the kid, Sal, really reminds me of Wes a lot, actually. Like the she kind of looks like her, but also like Wes is like unintentional. Yeah like especially for sweets like she's a real sweet tooth so if there's bit blue if there's berries around she's eating them all and just trying them or like can i just have a like she'll always say she'll say things like um can i just have another crumb of berries <laughs> she says things like Aww. measures things in crumbs just a little crumb so she, with her eyes closed like that like mm -hmm. as if she's like softening the blow and she goes ah, just a little crumb and does a little oh my god with her fingers i can see it i can see it, it. just a, oh she's a very good negotiator just please please she'll say it's it's very important to me oh i love important. her yeah, now I this is just too. like the sweetest yeah okay so, yeah now, I, I like I'm this a big book fan of this i also and that the bear for West. reminds me of Adrian because very hairy. Mm -hmm. Just like you, actually, how you were. How I am and yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. And will and be. And was and always will be. <laughs> God willing. Um and also with you. The but he, and <laughs> how, you know, because Adrian actually Adrian does love blueberries. Wes is iffy on blueberries. She only likes them if they're sweet, and she gets mad if they're tart. So it looks like you got it. Oh. She's like, tells me she's like, okay, I'll have I'll have them in my own mail today, but only the sweet ones. <laughs> so oh I'm like, okay. So then I act like I'm picking through them. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, but Adrian goes bananas, just bonkers for him. Always has blue teeth. And he's like, he just actually said blue. The reason I picked this book for today is because he said blueberries successfully for the first time today. Oh my God. That's blueberries. So great. Mo, blueberries, please. Oh, good blueberries. for him. Blue blueberries fell down. Oh, yeah. oh my God. You live in a world of cuteness. There is a, a certain cute element juxtaposed with all the, you know, snot and I know and stuff. I know. I get it. But let's just talk about the cute stuff because that's really all you're going to remember. Yeah, that's okay. I hope that's true. I hope that's true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to put a PSA at the end of this episode right now. Here we go. Here's your PSA. Maybe I'll put a little music behind me. <clears throat> Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a tick born illness that's not just in the Rocky Mountains. Turns out it's pretty much everywhere. Wes just got that fever 
and nobody knows that it's around here in Wisconsin or in other places that aren't the Mid-Atlantic, which incidentally does not have Rocky Mountains. So it's a sneaky little tick to begin with. But it's not where it's supposed to be. So watch out for ticks. These are dog ticks, wood ticks, whatever you want to call them, the big fat ones. It's not the deer ticks. I know we're scared of those too because of Lyme disease, but really, which do you want? Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain spotted fever? I feel like as far as like being able to scare people on an ad campaign, if we did a real ad campaign here, that one sounds scarier than Lyme Well, disease. just fucking Google it. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, Wes had a lot of weird rashes there. For a bit and a terrible abdominal pain mm. and she couldn't even eat a, cr- a crumb of blueberry not even a crumb so anyway that's our PSA uh, don't let your kids outside right is that how you do? right yep that's right that's and right. instead just read children's books hey speaking of children's books I guess that's all we have to say for today about this children's book, Blueberries for Sale. <laughs> blueberries for sale. Five <laughs> cents. Blueberries for sale. Uh, maybe that could be a follow up, actually. Sal as an adult or Sally. Or uh, what was it? Sally, Sally, Sally Gressa. What was it? <laughs> I don't <laughs> forget the name that we made up earlier in the episode. Oh, um, yes. Salisbury steak. Salisbury, Salisbury steak. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Salisbury steak. That's what she goes by. Not Sal anymore. And now she's a blueberry uh, peddler. Walker. Yeah. If you had to sell a berry, just quick, if you had to sell one berry, what berry would you pick? I'd say not strawberries right now. I'll tell you that from what I've seen. Uh, Kiwi? Muskmelon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Perfect. Um, I would do Dingleberry. That's all the time we have to say. That's all we have to say today about blueberries for sale. If you enjoy the show, please rate and review and tell somebody you like about us. And if you don't like it, tell somebody you hate. That'll show them. For a transcript of this episode or any episode of anything, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address on your screen. And we will send you back a post in that note that just says no. Until next time, good night, Mush. Good night, creepy old lady, and good night, book. The end.